right, Alexis, Josephs, there you are, <laughs> joining us from Vivo. Give her a hand, please. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I have a lot of energy, and it's post-lunch, so I hope that you guys are as excited as I am. But I'm Lex, and I am a pop culture addict. Yes, it's something that I've really grown used to understanding about myself. I've sought counsel and how I can get over this, but I'm really excited that at least Vivo is empowering me to go deep with my addiction, which is being obsessed with pop culture. How many of you guys have seen Beyonce's Single Ladies video? How many of you guys know the dance? Nice, okay. So, a couple of years ago, I thought it was pretty impressive that I was obsessed with Beyonce, and I was watching her music video, and I was trying to do this actual dance. And it was much harder than I thought. But what was so great was that this video all of a sudden showed up on the Chipmunk Squeakquel video, the movie. I have a 20-month-old son. He did not go see it with me, but I did take my nieces. And I thought it was exceptional that you had this one music video that was now part of the Chipmunk Squeakquel movie. Then I was watching on NBC Saturday Night Live, and I couldn't get over that on Saturday Night Live, Paul Rudd and Justin Timberlake were actually parodying with Andy Samberg the Beyonce Single Ladies video. She was actually the guest host along with Justin Timberlake as a cameo and went through what the choreography of this video was like. So the fact that I get to obsess over an artist in a music video that goes through many different mediums is great that Vivo is pop culture. Why does the shareability actually happen? It's actually because these artists are some of the most followed and loyal so social powers where fans just can't get enough of them. In terms of Vivo, six of the top 10 most viewed videos are actually Vivos. In terms of Twitter and in terms of Facebook, 14 of the top 20 all-time music videos are actually the most viewed videos. In terms of being shared, seven of the top 10 most followed artists are actually part of Vivo videos. Katy Perry is actually the number one Twitter account in terms of all of her followers. And finally, when you look at Facebook and Instagram, nine out of the top 20 overall Facebook pages are Vivo artists, and in terms of Instagram, 12 of the top 20 videos are, 12 of the top 20 artists are actually the most followed in terms of Instagram accounts. So this is really exceptional because this actually speaks to the fact that fans absolutely love their bands, and this is how brands can take advantage of the Vivo platform. Salut, Chico Pitbull. I'm Alicia Keys. I'm Carly Rae Jepsen. Hi, I'm Britney Spears. I'm Taylor Swift. And I am certified. And I am certified. And I'm certified. I am certified. And I'm certified. <laughs> is the mastermind of all this. Fashion is an awesome way to express yourself. Yay. You could stand under my umbrella. Ella, Ella. I'm 50 Cent, and music is my sport. This only could happen to me, by the way. I am a technology fool. Um, in terms of what you just saw, something that I get really excited about is that Vivo has been a syndication model since the beginning of our joint venture, which was back in 2009. We were able to get to scale really quickly because we empower the fans to actually consume this content wherever the content goes. So we syndicated the content to YouTube, which enabled us to actually become the number one global YouTube channel across their entire platform. We understood very quickly that our three core audiences, which are millennials, 
Hispanic, and moms, that they wanted to be able to consume this content wherever the content went. So what we found really fascinating is over the past year, more than 300% growth has actually come from mobile and connected devices, which speaks to the ubiquity and the seamless nature of this music video content. When we started in 2010, we were primarily a desktop play. Most of you would actually go onto YouTube or Vivo and actually start consuming content. But over the four year rise in Vivo, the proliferation of devices and connected devices have actually enabled us to grow along with those audiences. It's diversified who's watching them. It's diversified the, devi the, the devices in terms of how great they've been. Um, ironically, Roku and Xbox are two of the ones that are fastest growing for us. And we've actually been able to achieve the scale of a television network within four years. Something that we found really exciting, though, is how we're looking at the mobile device. When you think of short form premium content, and someone mentioned, Chris, what premium content meant to someone before, premium content to Vivo is the fact that these are some of the biggest artists in the world. The most creative, creative directors and producers are actually creating this content, and they're coveted by fans. So when you look at this content across device, you see that over the course of four years, the change in terms of engagement has actually occurred from desktop through connected devices. What we found really interesting, though, about our audience is when you go back to those three core segments of moms, millennials, and Hispanic, you see that they're actually engaging with our content in unique ways. Co-viewing is incredible. 76% of our cross-platform views are actually coming from the fact that a mom and her child are watching it together, or friends are talking about the latest Miley Cyrus fiasco. They're actually engaging this content and they're loving it. So something else that we found really exciting is the diversity of when you look at mobile and you look at connected devices, where are those audiences actually consuming content and how are they consuming content? This makes it really exciting for brands to utilize us. They're not coming for a one-stop place for a one particular demo. They're looking at the range of products that we have, where the content goes, and what audience is applicable to that actual device. So over the past four years, as we stated, what we have found that's been remarkable specifically for the US is that where that trend is going in terms of the switch from desktop to connected devices is really happening in, in the United States. When you look from last year to this year, the fact that you see that mobile is really increasing as its connected device in terms of that shift, that's pretty remarkable. In 2010, 100% of Vivo's traffic was on desktop. In 2014, more than 50% of our traffic now comes from connected devices and mobile. And so we've been talking about, obviously, when consumption occurs across these devices. For us, we're always on. The fact that music video content is released on an hourly and daily basis from over 50,000 artists that we have as part of our repertoire, it's truly unique in terms of how much content is being consumed all the time. If you look specifically at traditional prime time, we spike. If you look at specifically connected TV, we spike. But then, of course, when you look at the holistic day, because we have a content platform that's always on and that's always delivering new experiences and new content to fans, you really see that fact that this is a 12-hour to 24-hour cycle. So I know we've spent a lot about the actual metrics behind and the science behind what we're talking about, but I thought it would be a little bit unique to tell you guys how brands are working with us and how fans actually engage with our content. With short form content, it's very unique because you have to actually manage the ad load and the frequency in which you're serving an ad against specific content because of how short and how engaging that piece of content is by an artist. So we actually did an, a great partnership with McDonald's over the past four years. How many of you know what Lyft is? Great, so I'm not gonna bore you. Uh, Lyft is actually a new pro platform that enables a brand to get in at the bottom of when artists are about to break. So there are a lot of labels that come to Vivo on a yearly basis and they say, here are the priorities for the artists to break. This year, Justin Bieber has to break. Drake has to break. One Direction has to break. A lot of brands don't want to invest a lot of money in one artist anymore for an endorsement deal when they can scale much greater in terms of association. So what's happened is that McDonald's has taken advantage of the millennial audience who mostly consumes our content on mobile and connected devices. They are associated with the 12 artists that we believe are going to be the most applicable for the demo that they are looking to hit along with what, who the labels think are going to break. So they've been able to associate themselves with Kendrick Lamar, Lord, Jesse J, One Direction, all for one investment versus doing one-off endorsement deals. 
And of course, when we say the word lift, what it's actually measuring is not only the lift of the artist and how well radio spins, i2 downloads, Twitter followers, Facebook posts are actually occurring, but the lift in streams and the lift in all the KPIs that are associated to this program. When we look at live performances, American Express on stage is actually one of the best case studies that you could talk, to, talk about. Um, American Express on stage, how many are you familiar with that? Ooh, five, that's great. American Express on stage is really interesting. What Amex has done, and this leverages Viva's platform in a very different way, Amex has actually facilitated partnerships between directors in the music and movie industry, as well as with artists who are unbelievable. So for example, recently Steve Buscemi directed the Vampire Weekend live stream from Roseland. And what this ultimately does is it, it really meshes together the way that movies and television and music work best. This is a live stream event that Amex actually franchises, and we actually carry the stream on Vivo. YouTube carries the stream as well. Then we syndicate and clear all the content that Amex actually owns with the label. So in this case, Vivo is actually used as a syndication platform, not as a content curator. But because of our scale and our ability to clear rights, we're able to leverage the Amex partnership in a very unique way. This great opportunity is also fascinating for Amex because they know that a lot of their consumers globally and domestically are on the go. So the fact that they're able to actually look at this experience on their phone and actually able to consume and engage with the content in a unique way is perfect for what their objective is. So something that Vivo is focusing on over the next couple of years is our owned and operated strategy. For the first year, we really thought that syndication was the model that we wanted to most explore because we were able to get the brand out to users in a really easy way, and we were able to empower the fan to watch the content on any platform they wanted to. But in terms of innovation, when you're working with certain syndication partners, it's very limited to what you can do. So we're noticing that for the connected TV device strategy, that's where we're not only seeing the growth, but that's what we're actually looking forward to in terms of where we're going to innovate over the next couple of years. And so finally, we have two case studies that I want to share with you because we've been talking about the premium nature of content, but also how is content created or curated for really different audiences. The two case studies that I'm most highlighting are Lyric Lines, the way that Coca-Cola worked with us, and yes, that is Steve Urkel, that is Jaleel White, and how USA worked with us in terms of um, one of NBC Cable's properties. In terms of Tommy, Tommy is a man that is desperately looking for love, and he is a brand's dream. He is from Nashville, he's a blonde hair, blue-eyed boy, and he was really trying to pick up girls. So what he was doing was using lyric lines to pick up girls. He would go over to a girl and say, I would like for you to be under my umbrella, which was referencing Rihanna, or he would leverage one of Justin Bieber's lyric lines to literally hope to get a date. What we found out was that for the millennial generation, they look at someone like Tommy on YouTube as an amazing personality who they follow. So, so Tommy actually aggregated something like 500,000 followers on YouTube. Our content team realized this would be a great opportunity to connect with consumers from a millennial perspective in a very different way. We actually signed Tommy. We were able to make it um, somewhat editorial in the sense that we rolled this out during Valentine's Day of last year, where Tommy leveraged Taylor Swift, Justin Bieber, Drake, uh, Selena Gomez, and he literally would not only drop these lines in hopes to get a date, but the payoff was that they would share a Coca-Cola. So they would literally sit down on a bench and they would share a Coke. This became so successful because we actually not only seeded it out, but then it was picked up by Huffington Post and several other portals, that he landed a spot on The View when Jenny McCarthy was one of the hosts. How many people know who Jenny McCarthy is? Thank God. Okay. So Jenny McCarthy, um, as some of you may know, she actually used to be on a show called Singled Out, and that's actually what the dating scene used to be like. So Tommy didn't know this. Tommy sits around the table on The View, and Jenny McCarthy thought he was so cute that she couldn't help but French kiss him. And this became the biggest thing for Tommy because he'd not only never really been kissed by a girl, but let alone Jenny McCarthy. So this is one example of how Coca-Cola not only got paid, they received the payoff in terms of natural organic integration, content that's being curated and scripted specifically for the millennial consumer, but also how something can go viral in nature because of how good the concept is. Another franchise is something that Vivo's editorial team specifically does. There's a lot that goes on in the music industry and in pop culture on a weekly basis, and it's impossible to keep on, on top of it. So we rolled out a franchise called Hot This Week, where at the end of the week, we really talk about what happened 
throughout the week in pop culture with music artists and with television actors alike. Basically what was going on was that Sci-Fi has a new show that's coming out, called, and it was called Total Blackout. And Jaleel White was one of the players within this actual show. So Jaleel White hosted the franchise for a week, and he was able to really integrate not only his personality, but a lot of the show's attributes. So we worked with Ignited, we worked with the clients on at Sci-Fi, and we were able to produce this content. So I'm going to ask the gentleman in the back to cue the video for me so that you guys can see what the content is. Do you want to go out for a drink sometime? Just this kind of <laughs> like, And if you have a drink with me, then I can tell my friends I went drinking with a girl. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Hi, I'm Jaleel White from Sci-Fi's Total Blackout. And here's a recap of all things hot this week on Viva. Oh, I just want to dance. One Direction Go Retro in Vivo's exclusive premiere of Kiss You, dressing up as skiers, surfers, and even throwing Elvis's jailhouse rock in there. Yeah, yeah, let me kiss you. Kesha has all sorts of friends, and in the video for Come On, she has fun introducing us to a few animal pals. UK superstars and new Vivo Lift artists The Saturdays begin their U.S. domination by taking us on a singing shopping spree in What About Us? Three Doors Down rock their way through a portrait of small town life in their passionate video for One Life. Wrapping it up, newcomers MKTO have some unique ways of getting rid of the older generation in their thank you video. Thank you for nothing, nothing Coming up next week, ASAP Rocky's new album arrives on Tuesday, and he celebrates by making Vivo a playlist of his favorite videos. Hey, that's it for now, but don't forget to catch me on Sci-Fi's Total Blackout, premiering this Tuesday, January 15th, 10.30, 9.30 Central. I'm out. So ultimately, what this shows is that when you combine the power of a really massive platform with content that a lot of consumers and a lot of fans are really engaged with, and a real diversity of products where this content can ubiquitously be served, this creates a really compelling value proposition for Vivo, a really engaging consumer experience for fans, and a very attractive experience for brands. Thank you.